G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. With that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and let's get right into it. Posted by user, Revenant Rising, titled, Am I the asshole for telling my parents that if they won't tell me the truth, I will assume the worst of them? So, my 14 female family totally exploded while I was on spring break two weeks ago. I went on a trip with my grandparents and came back to my mum moved out and a serious sit down about them divorcing. It's not exactly a surprise because they've both been acting weird and shady for a while, but like, that's not what I was expecting to come back to and they could have let me unpack first at least. They asked me if I had any questions and I asked them which one cheated because that was my first thought. They got super uncomfortable and said that the reasons between them were private. I said not when it means that I suddenly lost my family over it and they owe me at least some reason that this is happening and we don't love each other anymore doesn't cut it. You don't just stop loving someone for no reason. That's dumb. So what? They said that was all I needed to know and that we need to talk about how the living situation was going to work and everything. I told them that I don't want to live with either of them if they're going to be like that. Everyone has been mad since then, and my mum came over to talk it out last night. They still don't want to tell me why. I told them both that if they were going to hide stuff, I'll just make up my own worst case and go with that. Since mum left, it can be all her fault, and since it's her fault, I won't live with her or go to see her. She got upset and said that was unfair and that it wasn't her fault. I told her to give me the real reason then, or to just deal with it. My dad said that I was out of line, and I said it can all be his fault then, and same deal. That started an argument between the two of them, but I'm holding my own. Pretty sure at least one of them will crack and tell me what happens soon, so I can decide how I feel about it. I don't need like graphic details, but a simple, someone cheated, or mum is a secret lesbian don't tell anyone, or we've both really changed a lot and don't want the same things, would help. If one of them did something bad, I want to know. If they won't own up or explain why there are no bad guys, they can both be the bad guy. I had a talk to my school counsellor today, and she said that it's totally understandable, but playing them against each other is going to hurt everyone. So, am I the asshole? Of course, I have already read this story previously, but there has been so much new content, I am covering it again. You guys have already heard my thoughts on this situation previously. This is a tumultuous situation. Yes, it's hard to... Break news like this to a kid. Sometimes it's better to just break the seal and let them know outright what the situation is and they can develop their own thoughts and feelings on that. Sometimes it's best to keep it to yourself and maintain the peace. In the comments, you're the asshole, but you're clearly just a kid who desperately needs therapy to process and understand this and navigate what it means. Your parents are doing a great job handling the divorce so far, so I hope they continue to do great and get you into therapy ASAP. If they're on top of things, they were looking into this before they even announced their divorce. OP replies, We already have to go see someone altogether this week, and I told them that I'm not saying anything to the counsellor because I didn't mess this up. They did. So they need counselling, not me. I don't have any other questions. If they can't answer this one, then I can't trust either of them, so nothing else matters. I don't want a relationship with them if one of them did something bad to the other. If they both caused it, I want to go live with my grandma instead of either of them. Can't trust people that act shady and hide important things. I'm 10,000% cool with torching relationships with people who lie and hide things from me. If my mom is a lesbian, that's completely fair. I'd want to know why she stayed married for like 20 years, but like, that's not anyone's fault. If my dad fell out of love with my mom, I would want to know why. Yeah, I'm gonna have some side eye for that because it's a little bit of a douchebag move after wasting like 20 years of someone's life and getting me mixed up in it, but as long as he hasn't been running around with other people behind her back, that's like, not like, unreasonable. I'm not going to be happy with either of them now anyway because I know they're hiding something and that's not okay. Even if it's nobody's fault, they could have said that instead of not answering. The only reason to hide it is if there is something worth hiding. If I'm going to go through the suck no matter what, I'm taking them with me. If they gave me some indication of why they fell out of love, sure. We fell out of love because we're super different now than when we got married. We fell out of love because we have really different values and can't agree. We fell out of love because we really just hate living together. We fell out of love because we hurt one another too bad to keep going. 
all those would be fine. I'm not stupid because I'm 14. There is always a reason that people stop liking each other, even if it's a dumb, it's a reason. I don't have to know everything, but I need a general direction. If my dad really hurt my mum enough to make her have to leave, I will eat him alive. If my mum hurt my dad enough to kick her out, big same. If it's just normal bullshit, then they can tell me that, and leave me out of it, and I'll figure out what I want to do later. Just on what I've found, they've planned the move for more than a month. This wasn't a last minute thing. My mum's apartment was rented three months ago. I have the entire email chain about it between her and her new landlord, and another set of DMs about it between her and her parents setting up the trip to get me out of town for the move. My grandparents also lied for the entire trip to keep up the lie. My dad has lied to his job on multiple occasions, and I have the Expedia receipts and texts to prove it. Also looking very much like they are both cheaters. I'm just researching the timeline and partners now, and finding additional supporting evidence so they can't claim that it's not true. Right now, they can come clean that they both effed up massively, and we can figure it out if I can trust them again, or good riddance to the trash. Back up to the post, we have an edit. Okay, I'm the asshole. That's okay. I did some digging on my own tonight, and I know pretty much what happened now. I don't feel bad about being an asshole to assholes. Thanks. Edit number two, people keep asking me what happened. My mom is stalking her boyfriend and his wife and trying to break up their marriage. My dad is screwing one of his 17-year-old athletes and other people. I got the receipts and got the help to report the 17-year-old thing because that is not even remotely okay. It crashed and burned on him on Friday and I haven't heard from him since then. I worked out stuff with my grandparents and they believe me that my mum is lying to them. I'm living with them right now and they're figuring things out with my other grandma to make a permanent plan. My mum is mad that I wouldn't go to her place after the blow up but I've already told her that I don't want to talk to her for a while. The cop said that I could stay where I am at the moment. That's where we are now. It sucks, but it would be worse if I didn't know and had to keep on living with them with all this crap going on. I'm glad I didn't listen to some people here and just let it drop. I'm glad to know that all the weird stuff I've noticed over the last year was real and not made up like my parents told me. I'm glad my dad isn't going to be able to be gross towards his players anymore. I'm okay being the asshole here just for that reason alone. And now onto the update. Updates and thoughts. This is more of an exercise for me so that I can get my thoughts straight before I make some decisions. If you're here to yell at me about being an asshole from my Am I the Asshole post, today is not the day and I am not the one. I accept the judgment, I just don't feel bad about it now. If you can be cool with your feedback, I'm open to that. I do listen and turn over reasonable advice, but I've had a stressful week, so constructive replies only please. I won't be humoring aggressive trolls. To bring everything up to date, 1. Family therapy was a fiasco. I told the counselor that I didn't want to participate and I would rather stay in the lobby. After she tried to convince me to stay in the room, she let me go back out. My parents told me that I was grounded if I didn't stay. The therapist talked to them alone for a while and then we left. I am not grounded, they are big mad. I still have to go with them weekly but I don't have to stay in the room. I have to go to an individual counselor next week, and I'll see what happens when I refuse treatment. Hopefully I won't have to go back. 2. I've decided to keep the contents of the dossier I gathered closed for now until I can weigh a couple of points of moral conflict. There are illegal things going on, but busting it open could hurt people who don't deserve it. It might keep some other people from getting hurt though. Depending on how my parents react, there is a not zero chance it could get me physically hurt unless I can do it in a way to be out of reach. I want to have private, in-person conversations with all my grandparents and maybe my rabbi first. 3. My mum cracked last night like I thought she would, but only admitted to my dad cheating. I am so done with the both of them. 4. I was going to spend a month with each set of grandparents this summer anyways, so my parents agreed to just let my home base be with my grandma until the fall. I'll go once my exams are done. At least my grandma is happy. And 5. I talked to my other grandparents after Shabbat dinner and told them that I know they lied to me. They apologized and we talked. I'm sleeping over with them this weekend and we'll hash some things out tomorrow. 
I feel like something I've learned this week is that some people really get mad when I resist being controlled. Being a good kid and doing what everyone has told me are the right things doesn't matter unless I shut up and do what I'm told. I'm not going to stop doing good, but I feel pretty done with shutting up and obeying. A lot of people said that I would regret knowing the truth. I don't. Happy isn't the word. I'm tired and really disappointed and angry. Now I know who I'm dealing with, and I feel better knowing that I wasn't imagining things like my parents said. In the comments, Coven Supreme says, I just had to comment here. Reading your post was like reading how I was at the age of 14. Very stubborn, very concerned with right and wrong, and filled with rage. But you're allowed to be filled with rage, because I can't imagine coming home at that age and hearing that. I'm so sorry, OP. I want to know though, how was your relationship with your parents prior to all of this? It seems like you were very adamant about your harsh, sorry I can't find another word but know that I'm not condemning you in the slightest, behavior towards them, which makes me think that you never trusted them. Or maybe you're just acting like this now because you were very confused about the situation. You said something illegal is going on and you don't want to bust it open because it gets other people hurt, but it also may prevent someone from hurting others. This is going to be a really awkward question, but did one of your parents cheat on the other with someone who wasn't of legal age? Because that's the only thing that comes to mind. You don't even have to answer if you don't want to, but that just seemed concerning to read. Edit, I read all of your comments and my suspicion was proved right, but I also learned other things. I'm so sorry. And OP replies, I haven't trusted my parents for a while. Looking back, I don't think I fully trusted them for way longer than before I started noticing the really weird behavior. In the last couple of years, I just didn't realize that's why I felt weird about them. They don't get me. It has just gotten worse over time. With how they handled all this, it's like they don't know anything about me. I loved my parents, I just didn't like them very much. Now I don't love them either. I don't want to get into the illegal stuff just in case, but this is life ruining go to jail for years stuff for my dad, and my mom is not far behind with what she's doing. There is at least one underage person involved, I'll say that. My mom's stuff seems to be escalating, so I'm worried that if it doesn't go the way that she wants, she might end up doing something even worse. And now onto the r slash legal advice post, titled, Legal question about anonymously reporting a crime. For the record, I'm under 18, so I'm sure that affects what I can and can't do here. This is something that needs to be handled by grown-ups, but I would be reporting on a family member, so I need to protect myself from the fallout. A close adult family member is having sex with a minor, not like a few years age difference thing, like decades. I know the right thing to do would be to report it, but I need to do it anonymously. I found out from texts that I have screenshots of. Is there a way that I can get the information to the appropriate authorities without being identified? Would they even do anything with anonymously sent screenshots? How likely is it to be tracked back to me once it's in the open? Thanks in advance. Edit, the minor is 17 and this is in Oregon. The older person is the 17 year old's coach. In the comments, Diablo Conqueso says, location is critical, as are the ages of people involved. In many states in the USA, the age of consent is as low as 16 years old, meaning a 16-year-old can have sex with anyone else, or older, or a little older, or much older, legally. In other words, if the minor is at or over the age of consent, it doesn't matter how big the age gap is. OP replies, Oregon. The people involved are 17 and 43. 43 is the 17-year-old's coach. Diablo replies, Oregon's age of consent is 18, meaning the sexual relationship wouldn't be legal in the first place, but the fact that the older adult is their coach probably makes it even worse. Law enforcement is who to contact about this. There is no guarantee of anonymity. While you can request that when you report it, and law enforcement would likely respect that, there are a ton of ways that someone can infer or merely guess at who reported something. How likely it is that this minor and or this adult could guess that it was you is unknown though I'm not sure that you should let that dissuade you. And OP replies, Okay, thanks. I guess I was hoping that I could just get a burner and send an anonymous tip or something. It's going to get rough if they figure out that it was me. I don't think that they would be able to get that just from the screenshots. I'm more worried about the cops telling someone. If it has to happen that way, I guess that's what happens. 
And now on to the final update. Things blew up this weekend. I wasn't home when everything happened, so I missed most of the fireworks, but I've gotten the story through family. My dad got suspended from his job Friday. The cops took him in. He's out now, but my grandparents told me that it's serious. Everyone in the family is all riled up, mostly at my dad. Apparently the word got out since he's a teacher and a coach, so it's a circus. My mom showed up to tell me what happened and to take me to her place, but I told her that I didn't want to go. My grandparents talked her down, so I'm staying with them. I go to a different school, but they decided to keep me home today. I'm supposed to talk with some people later this morning anyway and go get some clothes and stuff from the house. I haven't heard from my dad. My other grandma, his mom, came over yesterday and I feel really bad for her. This is the saddest I've seen her since grandpa died. No one seems to know that I reported it. I don't know what happened with the girl, but I'm guessing she admitted stuff was happening. I hope she's okay. I don't know where things go from here, but I've told all my grandparents that I don't want to live with mom. Living with dad doesn't seem like an option right now, but I don't want to go there either. They said we would figure it out. I told my grandparents, mum's parents, last weekend that I don't think she's being honest with them and they believe me. The cop I talked to said that as long as I'm in a safe place with people who are looking out for me, it's not likely that anyone is going to make me go back to my parents without a lot of legal wrangling, so as long as my grandparents are okay with it, I should be okay. I've got a summer job in the works, so I'm just going to focus on that and lay low I think. Save up everything I can. This whole thing is a mess, and I feel like I'm stuck in a nightmare a lot of the time, but I'm not sorry that I found out the truth. In the comments, Red Phantom says, Parents, they F you up. Penguin Joy replies, Poor OP has been lied to and gaslit so much that she has huge issues with trust. I don't blame her for digging deeper and finding the facts about what happened. Probably why she doesn't want to see a therapist. Talking to a therapist about how you feel takes a certain level of trust, and her parents have severely damaged their child's ability to do that. They don't deserve to be called parents. I never once thought that OP was the asshole in that whole situation. Hopefully she'll be able to heal on her own the further she is away from them. I remember reading her original post. I know that parents are usually told that it is not helpful or good for their children to know if they are divorcing because of infidelity or for one parent to lay blame on the other, so as a general rule, her parents are doing what they should have done in refusing to explain the details to their daughter. I think I commented to gently say something along those lines, and I'm pretty sure I also apologized for the fact that some of the comments were just awful and cruel. I also seem to recall saying that I agreed her parents were being unreasonable in refusing to give her any answers regarding the reason for their divorce. She gave them the opportunity to say something like they had just grown apart, etc., but they wouldn't even give her that, and that, quite reasonably, increased her suspicions. I definitely remember feeling bad for her, and now I feel just terrible for her. Jeez, the poor kid. However, given what OP discovered, especially about her father and his students, I have to say that, in the end, she was right to not let things lie, and I was wrong to say otherwise. Both of her parents are clearly complete messes, and, given their behavior, she's almost certainly better off living with her grandmother slash grandparents. Also, I'm really glad that she's got such a good rabbi and that she feels that she can trust him. She also revealed in subsequent posts about years of shady behavior that led up to the divorce, so it's not like everything went from fine to exploded over the course of a weekend. She'd already learned to distrust her parents and this whole situation just solidified that. Those details weren't initially included, but they didn't have to be for folks to not be effing assholes to a child trying to figure out what the hell was going on with the two people who she should be able to trust and rely on. Adventurer Like You says, as soon as OP mentioned something about how she had to think carefully about what she did because she was worried that the 17-year-old might get hurt as a result, ah, you can just tell that this is a kid who has been the grown-up with a moral compass in her family for a while now. Yeah, I like this kid. She's angry but smart about it and super brave. Rocky McNutt says, She kinda needs to talk to the therapist though. I hope the father doesn't do something stupid. Marmoset or Marmoset replies, yeah, for sure. She needs a change of mindset from thinking a therapist is something that she's being forced to do to make her parents more comfortable to something that she does for herself to help her process this heavy crap that she's going through. Hopefully she gets there eventually. Delta Gardevoir says, 
She definitely needs therapy with what's going on in her life right now. But honestly, I don't blame her for being pissed off that no one wanted to tell her the truth about why the family was being split apart. It's not like she's six and wouldn't understand. She's 14 and absolutely will not accept life changes without explanation. She proved that she is not just a doll they can drag around with no feelings and opinions, and that pissed them off because they're assholes who think that she should just mindlessly accept that her life is permanently altered. What's funnier is that, if the dad had broken and told the truth to her, maybe his crime would have never been caught by her. So I'm actually glad they didn't tell her anything. Well, that's not exactly the update that I was expecting from all of this, but glad that OP has dealt with it in the best way possible by the sounds of it. I'm also going to jump on the bandwagon of saying that there is nothing wrong with going to the therapist, and at the same time I understand why OP would be hesitant about it. Perhaps it's something to look to in the future in order to deal with, you know, the resulting impacts of everything that's gone on. Food for thought. I'd love to know what you guys think about all of this in the comments down below. Our next post is by user hangingout28 titled, Am I the asshole for continuing to sleep nude despite my neighbors being able to see into my bedroom? So, I'm a 28-year-old dude and have been living in my house for a few years now. One of the main reasons I chose this place was because my bedroom faced east, allowing me to wake up to the morning sunlight. Most mornings I wake up before my alarm goes off, just because the sunlight coming through the window waking me up. There used to be a tree line that provided a natural barrier between my house and any potential neighbors, so I never saw the need for curtains or blinds, along with they're expensive as hell for the nice ones. Recently my neighborhood expanded, and most of the tree line my bedroom was facing was cut down to build new houses. So boom! Then all of a sudden there's a house that was built right across from mine, and their window has a clear view into my bedroom. I've always been comfortable sleeping nude, and it wasn't an issue when there was no neighbors around. But not long after the people moved in there, the father from the house came over to my house and pretty much told me to stop being nude in front of my window since his family can see inside my bedroom. He wasn't nice about it. But he wasn't mean either, just matter-of-factly. Like he gave me an order, and he fully expected it to be done like I was his kid or his employee. I was somewhat surprised, but I understood his concern. So I made an effort to be more mindful of my nudity when I was in view of the window. I stopped cleaning and making my bed before getting dressed. I'd hop out of bed, walk into my closet, and at least put on shorts, and then go about my morning chores. That being said, I still sleep nude and I occasionally end up being visible to the neighbors for a brief moment after waking up. The father came over again, leading to an argument between us. I told him I was trying my best to be considerate, but there's only so much I can do, and that it's my house, and I'm not changing my lifestyle because they moved in. He threatened to call the police and said that I was being a menace to the neighborhood, whatever that means. So am I the asshole for continuing to sleep nude, even though my neighbors can see into my bedroom? Honestly, I'm going to be on OP's side for this one. I think they're not the asshole because... Why are they looking out their windows so early in the morning? Have they not heard of a thing called blinds? OP is doing this within the privacy of their home. They have also adapted their morning routine in which they're not going to be seen naked by that family. I feel as though OP has been more than lenient with this family and the fact that that father comes and has an issue, starts arguments, starts fights, that's just not on. I think the father of said family can invest in blinds and other solutions so that they're not looking directly into his bedroom, and I think he can mind his own business, not the asshole. In the comments, wildad2495 says, not the asshole. Some commenters are suggesting OP should invest in blinds. If the neighbors are bothered, then they should put up blinds. Why is this a problem for OP to solve? Pseudo Incognito replies, not the asshole, but offering another simple solution. I got a bunch of that frosty rainbow window cling stuff, so it distorts what you're seeing from the outside and actually makes the sunlight extra pretty. Plus, you only really need to put it on the bottom part of the window to essentially blur out anything. I was thinking the same. I used to live in a rented apartment where all the windows faced the building across the street, and I wasn't comfortable with neighbors being able to look inside of my bedroom, so I asked the landlord if I could put frosted self-adhesive paper. This allows in the sunlight, but blurs everything. Landlord was more than happy with my suggestion. Asleep Hold says, No assholes here, but 
Maybe you could get a window cling that obscures the view to your bedroom without sacrificing the natural light that you enjoy and fleshy freedom that you love. Jane Addams says, Everyone sucks here. While you have every right to be naked and do what you want in your own home, your neighbors, and particularly their children, also should not have to see you naked without their consent. Your neighbors could get blinds and curtains, but equally so could you. If the price is an issue, you could get one of those privacy films that attaches to the window with static. You can cut them to size. Could be a bit more expensive than some cheapy curtains, but will be cheaper than really nice blinds. I have some, and I love them. They let in sunlight without compromising my privacy. And that's where I'm going to end today's video, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought about that one in the comments down below. See you in the next one. Bye.